So currently, I'm a senior data analyst at a mental health tech company based in New York, and I'm very happy with this job. I work remotely from home, and I'm thankful for the team and company I work for. But it wasn't always this easy. I had a long career journey, and I'd like to share that with you. I always find it useful to hear about people's career journey, because everyone's path is different, but you can still get to the same place. You'll learn what you should major in if you haven't already graduated, the boot camps and online classes you can take to prepare yourself for interviews, how to land your first data analysis internship, and tips for succeeding at your first data analysis job. What should you major in, or is it too late to become a data analyst if I majored in something else? When I started at Berkeley, I was a math major. I wanted to be an algebra teacher because my eighth grade algebra teacher inspired me to enjoy math, and I wanted to do the same for others. Fast forward two years in, and discrete math was so hard, I was struggling. I told myself that I could still be a teacher without majoring in math, so I decided to explore other majors and pathways. I heard a few friends went to Peru for a sustainable medical brigade, and I thought it was a great opportunity, something that I wanted to try. From there, I found out that I was passionate about public health and the way that we can impact communities. I think what I wanted from becoming a math teacher was to impact people, and I found out I can do it in other means. Just when I decided on public health, the major got canceled. But luckily, Berkeley students like to protest and the major was back within a week. I was so thankful and I received my acceptance to the major. So as you can see, I studied public health in undergrad and I'm still a data analyst now. So there are many different pathways that you can take. You don't need to be a statistics, math, data science, or computer science major to become a data analyst, but you do need to take courses in some of these fields. What these classes cover is the ability to analytically think and work step-by-step step to solve your problems. And finally, they teach you how to communicate your findings to others. While it does help to have one of these majors, you can still become a data analyst without it. So follow your passions and just know the practicality of your chosen major. So it's not too late if you didn't major in something analytical. You can still take online classes and develop your data analysis skills. One of my biggest regrets in undergrad was that I didn't take even more challenging classes. At the time, I cared too much about GPA, and this is something that you should not take so seriously. Only graduate schools will look at it, as well as maybe your first job. How will you find what you want to do in life, and how will you be sure? Just remember that you don't have to have it figured out right away. When I was exploring different avenues in public health, I knew that I liked biostatistics the best because of the math you give me. My first internship was a grassroots advocacy position in DC. It required a lot of written documentation, as well as encouraging others to speak up for health centers. During my senior year, there was a really amazing session called What to Do with Your Public Health Major. So I attended that and learned about Omada Health, it's a health tech company focusing on improving diabetes management through a behavioral health coaching program. I was fascinated by the innovation, and that was when I decided I wanted to work in health tech. When I graduated, I started my first job as a research assistant in academia. I'd like to preface that I was very thankful for that job and for my amazing manager. However, I started to hear from my CS friends about the amazing perks of tech, and I was sold. But how could I get there with a public health degree? That's when I put two and two together and aimed to work in health tech. The ability to impact communities at the scale of technology and the perks. So if you're still in school, don't care too much about your GPA. Take those hard classes and learn what you need to but attend career fairs and events to help you understand what your major can do for you and what job you want. You don't have to have things figured out right away. Try different things and you'll find what you don't like, but you'll also find what you do like. And take those challenging classes and make those mistakes early because that's how you discover what you wanna do in life. Should you do grad school, enroll in a data analysis certificate, or learn from online programming classes. I chose to do a master's of public health in epidemiology and bath statistics at Berkeley for these four reasons. I chose Berkeley for grad school, again, because I already had connections in the Bay Area, which is good for finding jobs. The program has both epidemiology and bath statistics, whereas other programs only allow you to choose one. They require a summer internship and give you some support in finding that internship. And I wanted to work in health tech and SF has a lot of health tech companies. I recommend graduate school if you're interested in getting more in-depth experience in a certain subject, such as health data for me, and if that program gives you practical skills that translate to your future job. Having a grad school degree can help you stand out from other applicants, but you don't actually need it. 
You can also take a data analysis certificate and supplement your learning with online courses. You need to show that you can put your data analysis and learnings into practice for the job. Tips on this later. During the program, I made it my goal to take as many programming classes as possible. I took a big data course, which allowed me to learn statistical techniques in the real world setting through project-based learning. If you're learning online by yourself, don't just learn how to code theoretically, actually do projects. When I was first learning R, I was very frustrated, but I stuck with it and it became easier. There is a high learning curve at the beginning, so don't be discouraged if you don't get it at first. And there are plenty of resources online that you can use to learn. When I was at grad school, I not only learned how to program, but I also took classes outside of the School of Public Health, such as from the School of Information and the Haas School of Business. It's okay to be interdisciplinary, but be sure to have the core data analysis skills first. Through the School of Information, I learned about the Applied Data Science Certificate, and I felt like it was gonna be useful. Three courses I took were the Statistical Analysis of Categorical Data course, which allowed me to learn how to handle categorical variables, such as race, ethnicity, as well as weight levels, principles and techniques of data science course, where I learned Python statistical methods, as well as using SQL. And finally, a data science research design course, where we learned how to ask good research questions all the way to presenting our results. Here are some resources online that teach similar concepts. Grad school is if you wanna get more in depth in this subject, but you can also find a lot of online resources to learn how to program. Here's what you need to know about boot camps. I personally think that the Google Data Analytics Certificate is a useful way to learn SQL and has something that you can put on your resume. Most boot camps are very expensive, so I recommend trying to use online resources, and if that doesn't work, then you can consider a boot camp. Having a data analysis certificate from a credible source such as Google can be useful, but you can also learn online and showcase your skills during the interview process. I recommend certificates that allow you to complete projects so that you can submit these in your data analysis application. So how do you get your first data analysis internship? After gaining the necessary skills in data analysis, it's time to expand your network. During grad school, I enrolled in a useful class called Health Tech Speaker Series. Each week, there was a theme, such as having pharma companies come to talk to us. We listened to a seminar from these guest speakers from each of the companies and then we had a chance to network with them after. I didn't realize that this would be so influential in my career journey. For my program, we were required to have a summer internship and we did have some support through a job portal, but a lot of these internships were underpaid and sometimes made you work for free. Because I wanted to work in tech and they didn't really have these jobs on the job portal, I started to apply on Glassdoor and LinkedIn. I found a data analysis internship where I had talked to someone from the company during that seminar. I wrote in my cover letter of how I learned about the company directly from an employee. So I got an interview for the company and landed my first data analysis internship. Summer came around and it was my internship. My manager told me that what had set me apart from over 200 applicants was that I had mentioned that I learned about the company through her coworker. It does pay off to network and companies do read cover letters. I'll be making a video about application materials in a future video. What are tips for excelling at your first data analysis internship? I was so excited for my first data analysis internship in health tech. When I arrived on the first day with the other 12 interns, we had an orientation and then I got lunch with my teammates. My manager and I had a one-on-one -on -one to set expectations and talk about the types of projects that I'd be working on during the summer. One of my main projects was to analyze the health outcomes of our mental health patients and write a research paper on the findings. The second portion was to look at patient satisfaction surveys and extract qualitative insights on them. For the first project, I utilized a lot of the concepts I learned during my MPH program and also practiced using R in the real world context for my project. The 10 weeks went by fast, but I learned a lot along the way. Be open-minded about projects, but also advocate to your manager what you're interested in. Put your theoretical knowledge into practice. For me, I use my epidemiology knowledge and the coding that I learned in R to work on my internship projects. Stick to one programming language. During grad school in my first year, I learned SAS and R, but during my internship, I just stuck to learning R. Explore your interests. Internships are the time to try different things. Not only did I practice my R skills, but I also had the opportunity to look at patient satisfaction data and qualitative was a nice break from quantitative. Should you stay at a job if you're not happy there? During my last year of the MPH program, I applied to so many jobs. To be honest, I was surprised that the jobs weren't flying in. 
It makes sense though, because it was during the pandemic and job hunting is hard. But nevertheless, I found a statistical analysis job, which I found through the public health listserv. To get the job, I had a recruiting hall, a logic test in Excel, and then an interview panel where I explained how I got my answers. This job was at a health policy consulting company where I used SAS, one of the programming languages I learned in grad school. I was placed on a team where we checked health billing expenses and put this data into an Excel spreadsheet for testimonies. My manager emphasized almost immediate independence without allowing the team to work collaboratively. It could have been due to the nature of the work and the need to deliver projects with a fast turnaround. However, I believe in working as a team and wanted to find a workplace where this is encouraged. This work environment was not for me, so within a few months, I applied to a new job. I understand that not everyone has this opportunity, but you don't have to suffer at your first job. You can job hop. When you're interviewing for your next job, be confident when they ask you why you left your job so early. Be sure that you can explain how this new role will be different. What type of skills should you develop as a data analyst? For my second job, I worked at the same academic institution that I worked at straight out of college, but this time as a senior research data analyst. Here, I worked on a team with clinicians, researchers, and other analysts. I was able to put my epidemiology knowledge into practice and worked collaboratively with teams internationally. Here are common tasks and tips. Be comfortable writing the analysis plans. This involves the research question, data sources, biases, writing the project timeline, and the deliverables. It basically functions as a plan for your analyses and provides your teammates with an understanding of when you will be done. In your first few data analysis positions, try to figure out what industry works best for you. For me, academia didn't seem like the right fit. I still wanted to work in health tech, so I continued to search for jobs. Don't forget to still be grateful for your job and give it your all. I worked on a lot of R analyses and that really helped me develop my skills even though I knew that I didn't want to be there long term. When you're starting out as a data analyst, you might not know what statistical methods you might need most. Regression is actually one of the most common tools that you'll need and at first it seems like it is one of the more simpler analyses but it is actually used at companies. I recommend learning all kinds of statistical methods when you're coding because you don't know which ones are going to be put into practice at your company. My last tip for my second job is to lead analyses. This will help you teach others how to analyze data and it reinforces what you've learned. So because I was confident that I wanted to work in health tech, I continued to apply to jobs and I just so happened to find one on LinkedIn that was a mental health tech company. It really helps to be on top of the job boards. This is because they close the postings after they have many applicants. Now I'm at my current role as a senior data analyst at the mental health tech company that I mentioned. So what are tips to advance your career at this stage. Interview process for this job was a recruiter call, a call with the manager, a call with the director, and then an interview panel with some of my teammates, my current teammates, and coworkers. During this job, I learned a lot of SQL. This involves looking up a lot of resources online to help me learn the functions. The second tip I have is to keep a clean record of all the work that you've done and the people that it's reached. This is important for promotion season. You can write down everything that you've done. You don't have to struggle to remember what you've done over the year if you've been writing it down constantly. Interface with a lot of teams. You don't wanna just stick with your analytics team, but you also wanna to talk to people from your business insights team, marketing, or product. Also gain business knowledge. It doesn't help to only know how to work with data. You need to know how the data leads to sales for your company. In terms of analyses, keep practicing the programming languages that you wanna learn so that you can be marketable for future jobs. My journey to my current senior data analyst role in health tech was not straightforward, but I learned a lot of different things along the way. I hope you learned something too.